Hello dear chess friends, my name is Ilya Golichenko, I am international master from Ukraine. I recorded my first course for the worldchess.com and today in our first lesson we will talk about an advantage. What is it? Advantage uh, means mostly that you have better chance to win the game and we will talk about such parameters that you can evaluate the position and advantage as um, material, power structure, pieces mobility, space and king's position and you can have an advantage by such parameters and some of them more important are the less but for example if you have material advantage it doesn't mean that your position is better because if you have bad king's position and your opponent attacks your king you can lose the game or if you has better power structure you even play can play with some bad uh, skin position instead of that and your position will be better so if you have more advantages by these parameters you have more chances to win the game it's like in lottery uh, more tickets you have, more chances to win. And also, advantage, uh, we can talk about two types of advantage. Static advantage or permanent advantage and dynamic or temporary uh, advantage. When we talk about static advantage, it means that you have this advantage for a long time, maybe for the whole game. For example, if you have material advantage, mostly you can have it till the end of the game. Or if you talk about power and structure. And in that case, you don't need to uh, do some active uh, actions. You mostly have some time to improve your position and it still would be better. If When we talk about dynamic advantage, it means that it will change in a few moves and you need to do some decisive action to get more from that. For example, when we talk about king position, the king can be better and uh, locating safe position, but your opponent just keep your his king in the center. And in that case, you need to organize some attack on uh, opponent's king. In few moves, the opponent can also castle and you will lose this advantage. So, let's talk about such parameters in more details. So, let's firstly talk about material advantage. And we will talk um, in more details how to convert it in third part of this course. And now I just want to tell the general ideas and general characteristics. Mm. As you know, each piece has uh, its own price. For example, pawn costs one point, bishop and knight costs uh, three points, rook costs five, and queen costs nine just general price it can depends on such position for example 
some position power even can be better than rook when you will promote this power or bishop can be stronger than even rook so in that position we can see that white has clearly huge advantage and that's enough for, uh, to win the game and in general when you have material advantage it's good for you to trade pieces and try to avoid balance exchange because uh, less pieces on the board it's easier for you to attack uh, your opponent king and it's easier for you to convert it into the win your position and for example in this position white can easily attack e6 pawn by one two three four pieces and black can just attack it by three pieces king rook and bishop and we can see that white has here huge advantage and also we can check that uh, king black king is open here so the best idea for white here just attack black king and the best move here it will be just rook h2 and now I just want to checkmate the king on h7 square. And for that reason, black should play bishop g7. Then white can continue rook h7 check, king e8. Here, white can just trade all pieces on uh, g7 rook and bishop and it's also enough to win because even white can just firstly take on d7 by rook black takes and then we can use that black rook pinned on g7 by bishop on b5 and I can just continue knight c5 and that's easily been position. But in that position we can come back. Here white even can play more strictly. The one of advantage of material then is that you can give some pieces back to your opponent in a good situation and you can get some benefits from it. And here, the best move for white, it would be just continue attack on black king. And white here can just continue knight c5. The idea of that move is that white won't add more pieces to attack. And white just added knight to attack. So here, black can take bishop on b5. And here we can check that black king is weak and white can just continue rook g1. And now white just want to move rook g8 with checkmate. And if black just move uh, king f8 to protect g8 square, it doesn't work because white can just move knight takes e6, king uh, has to move back and then rook g8 is made so in that position the best way for black to continue the fight to just rook g3 to sacrifice rook and white can just take it and still it's winning position for white because black king in danger right now and black can just continue king g8 then rook g8 check, bishop e8, and white can just move king or knight 
as it may were just to give a move to black and uh, blacking has to move on c8 and then rook takes d8 checkmate so on this example we just saw that if you have a huge material advantage you can trade some pieces but you also can use the power of your pieces and you can for example organize some attack on your uh, opponent team and also as the idea of material advantage that you can give some pieces back in good situation for you to get more so let's check other position and as I told previously knight and bishop they has the similar cost but sometimes bishop better sometimes knight better in that position white bishop is better because if you talk about end game, mostly if we has pawns on both sides, uh, bishop is better. Because bishop can attack pawns on both sides. For example, if I bishop uh, will move to g4, from g4, bishop can attack pawn on g7 and pawn on b6 and bishop can move uh, for a long distance instead of that knight is not so mobile but knight can move to uh, the each square instead of bishop which covers only mm, half of a board and also it's important that in that position we call it open position where a lot of free space a lot of free squares where this can move and uh, for that reason bishop is better here and also we can check that white has better power structure because uh, white pawns uh, needs only few moves for promotion and it gives chances for white to use some tactic tricks in that position. But white should be careful with pawns in b5 and a6. Because knight can attack it and the bishop will be hopeless in that case. Because uh, bishop can cover only black squares. And knight can attack uh, pawns from black squares, and in that case, bishop can just control black squares. For example, if if knight move on e7 and then on g5, from that place, knight can move on c7 and c3 squares to attack b5 power. And in that case, if knight moves on g5, bishop can move on e5 and from e5 bishop can control these both squares. So let's move to forward and in that position black just move knight e7 and the idea of Black just move knight d5 and then try to attack white pawns. And here uh, white has such nice sacrifice. So here white can take on b6 by bishop and black can't take on b6 because in that case white just move a7 and Knight needs to move knight g5, knight c7 to stop us, and white needs only one move to promote the power. So when black takes on b6, it gives for white winning position. Even white can checkmate black king. He can come back. Here, if 
knight move on c8 and attack also bishop on b6 and uh, protect pawn on a7. In that case, white can just continue sacrifice, bishop sacrifice, and white can just take on a7. In that case, black need to take it. And then white can just move b6. And here two pawns, two connected pass pawns, better than knight. Because if knight move on c6, white can just move a7 and then promote power. And if in this position knight move on c8, white should move b7. Of course, not a7. It would be a big mistake because in that case, knight takes on b6 and from that square, knight just control a8 square. And in that case, black even can want to do. So, we can come back to this position after bishop sacrifice. And let's check knight c8. Not the best move. So black can just move here knight d5, attack bishop, and lose another pawn on a7, white takes, and here black can just attack pawns, knight c7. So white just push pawn b6, knight takes on a6, and here black also don't have time to stop this power. If black has time to move knight c5, then can, knight can block this pawn on b7 square. And in such end games, uh, knight can just block pass pawns uh, on uh, opposite color uh, of square of bishop. Mm. And uh, here, black just need one more move, but I just move b7, and next move, y will promote pawn, and black has to sacrifice knight, and lose the game after that. So, in this example, we saw that in open position, mostly bishop is better than knight. So, let's move forward. In this position, we can check that knight is much better than bishop. Firstly, because here bishop has only two moves. On e2 and on c2. And both these squares controlled by knight. So it would be a mistake to move bishop. Because white will lose it. As a Think why here bishop is worth the knight because white has mostly all pawns on white on light squares and uh, the color bishop also is uh, white. So in that case, uh, bishop just limited by all pawns and. Bishop can protect that pawn, but the mobility of bishop is limited. And in that case, uh, white bishop is not so strong. And uh, also, this position is quite close. And in such a position, knight is better. Because here, knight can just easily attack weak pawn on a5. Because no one can support it. And knight needs only one move on c6 to take power on a5. And we can talk that in that position black has static advantage. And in that case black has a lot of time to improve his position. And no needs to move knight on c6 right now. It gives white chances to move bishop away and to give him a freedom. 
So, in the NK, kink is an important piece, and it's uh, we have a general rule that you have to try move your kink to the center. And here, black has time to improve king's position. So the best move here would be just to move king f6. The idea is that then a king can just move on e5, and when knight move away, king can continue his trip to g4, and then king can just uh, move to e3 or to c3 and help a uh, knight to attack uh, pawns. And this position is winning for black. The problem for white is that white pieces, for example bishop, cannot attack uh, pawns, because mostly all black pawns are located on dark squares. So we can check how it can be White can move king to the center, f2. Then black move king e5. White moves king e1, with the idea to move king on d3. And here, only that position, black can just move knight c6. King move on d2. And here also important moment, that black can take on e5, a5. But after that, white king just move on d3. And uh, in that situation, for black, uh, we will have some problem how to continue, how to um, get more from that position. Because uh, white king just protect g4 square from moving uh, black king, and it takes a lot of time for black to convert it into the win. So here the best move just to move king on d4 and after that black can just take on a5. Black has time. And also here if white uh, king just move to some side, for example king move on e2, then black can just move king to c3. And uh, here, the best way for white just to wait. White can just move bishop c2, black takes on a5, we should move back, and here black can just move knight back, and here the idea of black just to push a power, a5, then black can move knight on b6 to support power and after that move power a4 and when power move on a4 white will lose c4 power because if black will take it uh, I mean white will take power on a4 black can take on c4 and after that black will have two connected fast powers and it's enough to win so that position, in that example, black just convert uh, advantage of uh, pieces mobility and king position, uh, firstly into material advantage, and then if black will play well into the win. So, the next thing I want to talk about is power and structure. And here we have endgame, and in this position, as we check, uh, material is equal, but it's easily winning position for white because of power structure. Here we can check that white has two connected fast paths, and this pass needs only a few moves to promote. And mostly in end games, fast power uh, gives you a big advantage, and especially connected.
bus pass. It's a big power. And here, White can just easily move A7 as this pawn supported by Rook from A1. And the idea is that Black Rook need to block it. Because if Black Rook move away, for example Rook C8, White will promote power with winning position. And after that, White can just easily move P power, B6, B7, and then promote pawns. And if you talk about black pawns, black needs just uh, to trade G power to make fast power. For example, black needs just to move H5 and then H4, but it's hopeless here because why just need to move to move pawn on B7 and promote. Here another example of power structure. Here white uh, has past pawn, H pawn, and other pawn just block uh, three black pawns. And here black is pawn up, but it's a win position for white. Because black can't move pawns, you black just move A5. For c5, white can just take uh, this pawn and pass on. And in this case, uh, here, white king can just easily move and take all black pawns. Uh, and black need um, more time to take firstly h5 white and then try to stop d power. So, for example, white can just move knight d5, and white's idea just to move knight c6, and then take all these black pawns. And black uh, don't have enough time to stop then white b power. So, despite the fact that here Black is power up, it's easily win position for white. So if we talk about N games, as power, it's a big power. Here another example, and as power also can be a big power, because uh, no other pawns can support it. And for example here, black pass pawn on a6 just a week and white can easily attack it by rook and then white can easily take it and also we can check that here white's power structure is bad because mm, white will have power up after rook takes on a6 and then uh, white can uh, push pawns and make some weaknesses. Maybe it would be g5 or f5, f6. And in this position, white has good chances to win. So, in some cases, fast pawn is a dangerous pawn and it can help you to get some benefits. But sometimes, it can be a weak power, and your opponent can just easily attack it by his pieces. And you need time, and also you need some support to protect this power, and also uh, to push this power for promotion. So, I will finish my first video lesson and we will continue talking about power structure in next part of this course.